Hey everyone, welcome back to uh, Hero Hero Go Show. I am your host, Bo Ranstell. With me in our continuing and, and concluding journey, I might add, through the I films from the Peng Brothers, uh, is Richard Glenn Schmidt of Hello, This is the Doom Show. So hello to the host of Hello, the, This is the Doom Show. Hello to Bo, and hello to all the adventurous cinema goers that are here to listen to us discuss the best film we're going to talk about today. Yeah, and I would also say this is a nice step up, I think, from the I3. Like, the I3 is way more bananas than this one. And and yes. if anything, this one might suffer from a little bit of, you know, a, a, a little sameness. Uh, to this film it, it's not daring or adventurous yeah. or anything like that the way that the i3 just goes fucking nuts with basketball ghosts and whatnot <laughs> um, this has got some weird this has got some uh it goes off on a, a very uh, it, a, a, it a tangent does, it gets a little nuttier as it goes along but then it, it kind of w- reels it all back in but uh yeah so this is the child's eye and of course, you know, we like to to educate a little bit here. And so this is the film, the Ping Brothers, you know, they they had done Bangkok Dangerous uh was their first film that they had done together, which was really popular uh in their uh native Hong Kong and and of course uh you know, film shot in Thailand uh including the i and the i2 and the i3 and and you know went off and they they did some uh some separate projects and then reunited for the american remake of bangkok dangerous which starred nicholas cage and unfortunately that wasn't terribly well received this was sort of the beginning of the downslope for nicholas cage even you know, it's sort of right around that period where he was doing like the National Treasure sequel and uh, and that kind of thing. Movies that were still legit, but you were starting to see some bumps in the road from big budget Nicolas Cage to holy shit, I got to make some money, Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he proved that in a pinch he can... He can do 16 movies a year or whatever he's yeah. doing. It was and he'll wild. do them anywhere, anytime. If there is a paycheck, Nicolas Cage is your guy. So, uh, and then <laughs> look, man, it happens to the best of us. He got, he got into some tax trouble. He got himself out of it and, and probably still is. But, um, regardless, the, the guy's owning up to it. I respect it. I have seen his pyramid in first person. I have been to that cemetery where his tomb is there Yeah, Nic- Nicolas cage was definitely a dude that probably should not have been super rich <laughs> and they'll say the same yeah. about me eventually one hopes um so Nicolas cage was in bangkok dangerous not incredibly well received and then the Peng brothers bounce back to this in 2010 and the child's eye kind of completing uh, their trilogy <laughs> with a fourth film uh, that <laughs> no one really asked for, uh, but here it is. It is uh, presented in the 3D, uh, although I did not yes. watch it in 3D, but this is a 3D-ass movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, so let's just jump into this thing. Here, Here's what happens in The Child's Eye. Uh, we've got Rainy and Locke who are kind of the main couple of this film. Uh, Rainey is uh, the young lady. Locke is the dude uh, who is kind of a dick at the beginning of the, well, not just at the beginning yeah, of this movie, for a large chunk of this movie. movie. Locke, yeah. Locke is just an asshole. They're beautiful. I mean, this this Abercrombie and Fitch gap kind of opening, like gap Asia, I'm assuming. This opening is like this, vaca- they're on vacation. It's picturesque beautiful beachside villa thing going and i'm like this is gorgeous yeah they're on a pier it's just it it really is a good looking scene and unfortunately the whole scene is just like so you have something to tell me no 
Uh, which if you've seen one of these movies, you know immediately what her secret is, like, or what she's holding back telling him immediately. <laughs> yes, it 100% from scene one, you're like, oh, so she's pregnant? <laughs> Got a bun in the oven. Yeah, and then cut to credits, they were just like, okay, let's go back to the hotel. And then credits, um, and then we we cut to our heroes of the film. Um, gathered around a television and there's news breaking of this giant demonstration happening and there's word that hey like we need to get to the airport because the airport's about to get shut down and so they're gonna they're gonna pack up their shit and go and it's it's rainy and lock and uh let me oh geez what are our other names here ling is and, uh, and then uh there's Hay who is with Ling and then there's yeah. Chiwi who is with Rex. So those are our Rex. three couples. Yeah. Wow. Rex, yeah. They only say it once in the movies. Here's one here's one thing that the Ping brothers could do a better job of and or uh whoever's localizing the movies for English translation throw a name in every now and again how about that how about i know the names of the characters i'm supposed to care about just saying. uh did you happen to uh check out the english dub by any chance i did of this, this no. fine feature no holy shit <laughs> i flipped it on the english dub for a few minutes just to get a taste and uh all of the guys the actors are really good like they actually are doing solid voice acting the ladies, not so much. Oh, it no. sounded like um, they were doing like uh, almost like video game cutscene acting, where they they didn't have a script; they just had the lines like completely dis- disembodied from the rest of the story. It was wonderful. The other thing about this, Richard, is that for like two and a half seconds in this movie. I thought we were going to get some honest to goodness, like political discourse, <laughs> but instead we get, oh man, the social unrest, it's going to spoil our vacay, brah. Okay. So to put this in context, over the course of 2005 to 2006, Thailand had an enormous military coup. Oh boy. There was a, a dude, uh, hold on. Let me get his name. His name is Taksin Shinawatra, who was a businessman who had risen to power. He became prime minister um, and was incredibly corrupt, as it happened. And so there was a military coup and there were giant protests. And it was an enormous period of political upheaval and and unrest and uncertainty and nobody was sure what the nature of thailand was going to be uh on the back end of this and in fact thailand is still like that government is still kind of corrupt and shaky um so there is a (laughs) there is a comment to be made in this film about that sort of thing but mm-hmm. like you said, Richard, the <laughs> long and short of the political discourse of this film is, oh, man, the breakdown of a government on our vacation. <laughs> Mega bummer. Right. <laughs> what, are, what are we going to do with all these people running around throwing bottles and bricks at the police? This is what I <laughs> signed up for. I was supposed to take a balloon tour and now i'm getting billy clubbed where's my rickshaw (laughs) right wait do they have they have rickshaws there i don't know probably maybe i don't know i don't have that information in front of me richard (laughs) you're like i brought the information that wasn't part of it i look i had things about the prime minister of thailand i did not have rickshaw information (laughs) Shame on me for asking. I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm curious. That's all. Apo- you are yellow. Um. <laughs> or, hmm. Yeah. Oh, things got erotic. Um. Anyway, speaking of erotica, uh, we have. I think it's Ling and Hay 
who kind of take off like after everyone decides like we gotta get out of dodge uh before the shit goes down and everybody in this movie is obsessed with the relationship between rainy and Locke. oh my god it's so amazing <laughs> it's all anyone like the whole vacation depends on them working their shit out yeah it's all anyone talks about ever in this movie and so this uh, hey and and ling here are just like yeah boy i really think that uh Locke was being kind of a jerk says ling meanwhile hey is like well i don't know you know that lock has to put up with a lot of bullshit from rainy and so so breaks down completely on gender lines and then we cut to the source of the argument rainy and lock who are arguing while they pack too and uh like rainy is getting and look i'm not saying it's her fault nobody's victim blaming here but rainy makes a series of decisions that are at best irresponsible <laughs> where for example when her mother calls her in this scene is like hey rainy i heard they're shutting down the airports are you okay and she's like what something's happening huh i didn't know mom and you're like wait a second what is up with rainy and these protests and Locke is just like look you need to stop being selfish. Forget about all the protests. And I know you want to go look and see, but we need to get out of here. Like, we don't know what's going on. We've all made a decision to get to the airport as quick as possible. Quit fucking around. Let's go. But of course she doesn't. <laughs> so, um, they're going off to the airport, but rainy tells everyone on the way, uh, while they're in this van, on the way to the airport, this story about pregnant women can't uh, how they can't cut feed off chickens because if they do, then they'll have kids with no fingers, according to this little folklore book that Rainey's always reading. Yeah, we we get um like <sighs> there's a couple things this movie does that I thought was going to tie it into the other films in the series uh, but then it doesn't and this little uh pamphlet on the supernatural that she has this book mm -hmm. it, it it comes up again later in a pivotal moment but it's just it's just a throwaway ha throwaway thing where it's like are we gonna get into what the uh the i3 got into which was this like this guidebook to the supernatural no not doing that that's her character trait is she likes the spooky stories. Yes. It is just she likes spooky stuff and apparently violence in general. <laughs> and, and so uh, they get stuck in traffic here as demonstrators start rushing around them. And Locke is just like, well, you shut the fuck up, Rainy. Like, quit, quit egging everyone on with all this superstitious bullshit we have actual things to worry about and i sound like i'm on Locke's side and i'm really not because he's a jerk about all of this <laughs> so as someone who believes in conflict resolution de-escalate de always be de-escalating and Locke doesn't de-escalate Locke just shuts down it's a, it's he's, a problem uh, he, yeah he's he's stonewalling these people yeah and so they hear now that the, the airport has officially been closed. And the driver's like, look, there's no way I can get you back to your original hotel. So I can take you to the Chong Tai Luan Hotel, which he does. And there's a great, you know, in quotes, gag shot where they're all standing in front of this shitty hotel staring up at it. And trying to decide whether or not they want to just try to walk back to their old hotel because of how shitty this place is. But then they decide, well, it's better here than out on the streets where, mind you, a complete insurrection is taking place. <laughs> At this comedy, I was like, uh-oh. I said I was worried for you, Bo. I was like, oh, shit. There's comedy because they have this just this little tiny, tiny thread uh, of comedic stuff about this disgusting hotel 
the exchange with the the cab driver is very silly. He's yelling at them in English. They're yelling back at him in English, and they're like, "Huh?" And it's it's like, okay, here we go. I I got the tone of this movie all figured out. No, I don't. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to it's like sands through the hourglass, Richard. Uh, hard to hard to grab. Um. <laughs> So, yeah, so they also encounter three creepy kids with their dog that will be important later. And uh, Ling is like, I have a real bad feeling about this place. While Rainy is like, you know, that dog that was just staring at us, 100% he was staring at a ghost. Staring at a ghost, everybody. Dog. Staring yep. at a ghost. And Locke is just like, oh, God damn it. It's happening. Yeah. All re- we have just stepped off the streets that are by the way filled with protesters and again with the spooky dogs and so they they check into the hotel uh where and like you said it's kind of uh played for laughs where there are stains and cobwebs and 3d bugs flying at you richard (laughs) yeah lion's gate wasn't gonna pay for my 3d glasses so i just got the 2d version yep yep unfortunately uh and you don't get the you know I would say uh, not since Argento's Dracula 3D has 3D been so craftily used <laughs> um, as like this bug coming at you. There are just like a handful of scenes in this that harken back to the days of like Friday the 13th 3 of just here's something coming at you. Um, anyway, it's just it's primitive 3D there like there's a way to do three dimensional stuff. And it's layering, baby. You just layer it. Um, I'm a 3D snob, Richard. So you should be. I look. I had a 3D, a, a 3D TV in my home, and would watch 3D movies in, in the house. That's wow. how much. Yeah, uh, that TV no longer powers on. <laughs> so <laughs> I just have a bunch of 3D movies I can't watch anymore, Richard. Oh, Patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcast uh, is where you can. <laughs> support my journey to get another 3d television um but that's not going to help us tonight richard so they all go to i think just the hotel restaurant is where they order all this rice and stuff yep they are uh they're they're terrified of how dirty this place is but they are not too scared to order like lots of things with pork and eggs in it yeah and so rainy's mom calls back and he's like hey are you still at the hotel are you at the airport and she's like no 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 we couldn't get to the airport and they shut it down and her mom says your uncle can come pick you up and take you to a better hotel and this is where uh not hey rex starts fucking with a chair a little bit to make everybody think that a ghost is moving it. Yeah. The the creepy kids and the and the dog uh, are watching them, are watching them. And this chair keeps moving and keeps moving. And just the dude moving it with his foot until it's not. Right. Until the dog really starts staring. And then the chair moves again. And everybody's like, Rex, knock it off. He's like, it wasn't me. It was the, the dog was looking at the ghost that did it. Mm-hmm. The the ghost that ordered some freaking dumplings. It, right. We have ghost dumplings in this movie. <laughs> Who's this f- delicious food for? Uh, mm-hmm. I'm hungry, Richard. That's the problem. Uh-oh. Yeah, I could go for some dumplings right now. Or any time, really. I don't, I don't have to stand on ceremony for me. You need a 3 a.m. dumpling alert. Ugh. Or as, uh, as Wendy's are saying, the major bag alert. So... Speaking of, there's a Wendy's real close to my house, Uh-oh. and uh, I don't know how. I honestly do not avail myself of Wendy's very often. It's not uh, every now and again I have like a little fast food cheeseburger treat, but most of the time I try to keep it in the lanes. You know, good job. But they're about to open up a Panda Express right next door to that thing. Ooh, you've got like three months of good eating before they finally <laughs> give up. Yeah, so I'm very excited for the peak. Of China Express, which will be from opening day until, I don't know, 45 days after that. <laughs> <laughs> the Whatever the first turnover is. After the corporate trainers leave. Yes. Um, but I'm excited about that. Anyway, that has nothing to do with this movie, and I apologize to our listeners. So, in walks Brother Quan, 
uh, who is essential to this movie. And he's this, uh, I don't know, 30 ish dude with a bum foot. And he shows up and immediately the, the lady who runs the place is like, Hey, take all these kids back to the orphanage. And he's like, "Uh, all right. And see this, this is, this is dude has been in a lot of shit though. This is, uh, Ka Tung Lam, mm-hmm. and he was in freaking everything. The most famous being uh, Ip Man. Oh sure, yeah, uh, yeah. Wow. Okay, he has been in everything. Um, yeah. So he uh, he passes by the three creepy kids who are still all just staring at shit um, because that's all they do in this movie until the little girl really takes center stage. And, um, so the rice finally shows up creepy kids and their dog all stare at the chair until it moves again on its own. We talked about all that stuff. Oh, the demonstration has now made it to the hotel's doorstep. And rainy is like, did you say demonstration? Uh, I'm just going to go peek and look real quick. And so she runs outside to get in the middle of all this shit into the fray she goes yeah i mean right into the middle where one side is police who have set up a barricade other side is protesters shouting at the cops to leave the cops start firing fucking grenades into the crowd the crowd starts firing back rocks and bricks and bottles and you know tire rims and shit and then they're like right next to our heroes gas grenades are going off and all kinds of stuff and in the middle of this chaos, Rainy looks over and sees a ghost lady. And then Ling looks over and she sees kind of the ghost lady, but it's really just a 3D ghost hand coming at her. Oh, my God. <laughs> it, it's a complete, like, coming at you. It was, um, this is where I thought they were going to tie in some more uh, thematic elements from the other films i could have sworn there's going to be some eye trauma here or just hey at a time where everything is in upheaval or whatever like hey let's make the demonstration be something more than the MacGuffin for rainy but make it part of the story like hey the, the ghosts are appearing because hey there's you know violence is imminent and where there's violence there's death and where there's death there are these spirits or something, you know, or anything, anything to tie it to the other movies. And it does nothing to try to nestle uh-huh. it into the world of these films. I wrote in my notes, this movie is a riot or it contains riots. <laughs> we, it contains multitudes. Yeah. Um. All right. So Ling, uh, who got the ghost hand in the face, wakes up as everyone's just huddled around her and she's like hey did you guys see that ghost hand too and everybody's like no and of course this shifts immediately into another argument between Locke and rainy in their room as he blames her for ling (laughs) freaking out (laughs) a hundred percent he's like are you happy now are you is this what you wanted (laughs) Because now Ling is in that bed all freaked out saying she saw ghosts and shit in the middle of a demonstration we shouldn't have been in in the first place. Sorry. My bad. Yeah. And there, so Rainy starts to press the issue of like, so do you want to break up? Is that what you want? And Locke's like, you know what? Let's just... We'll break up when we get back to Hong Kong. How about that? Let's just enjoy the rest of the trip as much as we can with a, you know, insurrection happening at our doorstep. But as soon as we get back to Hong Kong, yes, we are done. In in Hong Kong, we'll break up was uh, one of Taylor Swift's hit songs. Yeah, I think that one was about John Mayer. Yeah, dude, I'm keeping this shit relevant for our listeners. Our uh, Hero Hero Go Show listeners are some of the biggest Taylor Swift fans you're going to run into. That is undeniable. Dude, I'd be worried if they weren't. Uh Uh-huh. They, you know what? And we are pro, on this show, we are pro re-recording the Masters. So. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Let, hey, those belong to Tay-Tay. That's what I say. (laughs) 
Um, <laughs> I know more about that than I thought I did. As I started to say those things, I was like, do I know things about Taylor Swift? And it was you're, that you're she's schooling. Re- it. Yeah, she's you're re- schooling me, brother. Uh, it's, it, it's a weird world. Um, so it's not enough to see Locke and Rainey arguing and talking about breaking up. It's also fun, Richard, to go to Ling and Hayes' room where they talk about Locke and Rainey breaking up. <laughs> they are so far up their asses. What is going on? It's crazy. As I was watching this, like my note here in in this scene is like everyone is really uncomfortably into their relationship. Uh Locke and Rainey's. Like I don't know what why they are the focus. And it's never clear. Like there's no like, oh, we set them up mm-hmm. and we have this vested interest. Everybody's just like, oh god, if these crazy kids can't make it, what chance do we have, I guess? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they're they're the standard by which all relationships are measured right if they if this doesn't work all human relationships are done children of men people yeah children of men a hundred percent and so while rainy is asleep Locke goes for a walk and or not goes for a while he goes to the bathroom is where he goes i thought he just left for a while and then it turns out he doesn't uh but she hears this bang that wakes her up and then we realize that somebody out of focus is in the bed beside her and we know it ain't Mm. luck because he went to the shitter as scientists call it and then as the figure rises up we see it's the the ghostly dead lady again slimy yeah kind of yeah kind of oozy and glistening and stuff and rainy jumps up and as soon as she turns around oh huh, huh, ghost is gone and then Locke comes out of the bathroom and is like the hell are you doing out of bed what are you jumping around for the hell is all this i thought we i thought we said you weren't gonna act crazy until we got back to hong kong i thought we talked about this we're gonna break up in hong kong brother right can we not can you not not be crazy for the next 24 hours. How about that? And so our heroes minus Locke assim- assemble for yet another meal. And they're like, hey, where's Locke? And Rainey's like, I don't know where he is. And you know what? We're not waiting for him. Let's just go ahead and order. Hey, it's a new day. It's a Rainy uh, is in charge. Rainy doesn't wait for Locke anymore. And uh, while they're eating, hey, the, the guy... Uh, that is, or I'm sorry, it's Rex. Um, it says, I'm really sleepy. And the girls are like, all right, well you wait here. We're going to go get the food. And he's like, yeah, all right. I need a vacation from my vacation. Oh, I read that in Dilbert. God, I'm too tired to think of better comic strips than Dilbert. (laughs) <laughs> Calvin and something I can't remember. The, they won't animate it because the dude's like a dick. <laughs> but also, there's some integrity to it. I don't. I don't know. I'm too tired to think about it. <laughs> um. So, uh, they're they're like, hey, they run into these kids again. They're like, oh, this whole place is fucking creepy. Look at these kids, and the whole place is falling down around us. And Rainy is like, yeah, I'm waiting for my mom to call to say that this uncle is on the way to pick us up. And then they turn around and all the guys are gone. Or, you know, Hay and Rex are gone. And they're like, what the fuck? So they go to the lady at the front desk and they're like, hey, did you see our boyfriends? And she's like, nah, I haven't seen anybody. And then the creepy girl is there by herself her her creepy guy friends are missing and they're like hey where are your other little creepy friends and and she's like the woman who ate with you guys earlier she took them all away and immediately rainy is like i believe you lead on yes lead on young i love it (laughs) young pioneer this, this was the scene i watched in english was you believe her how come you believe her? It was a oh, pretty great. That does sound good. 
Yeah, I know. Uh, so this little girl takes them all upstairs, um, and she says, hey, this is where that ghost lady you saw was locked. And she says uh, the dog that they're, you know, that has been staring everywhere uh, can see the ghost all the time, but people can only see her every now and again. And, th- and uh, what's that dog's name, Bo? Didn't they? Oh, what is the dog's name? <laughs> his name is Doggy. Oh, that's right. I thought for I some know. reason I thought his name was like Ghost Watcher or something. I was like, no, that's not Hell, right. I still don't know. I didn't know that guy's name was Rex. So. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, the dog had a name? Shit. <laughs> the, the one character that was actually named in the movie. The rest I had to... <laughs> I had to like infer from the IMDB page and and the poorly translated credits like it was some kind of, you know, actor Sudoku. Yeah, you had a chart. Yeah. yeah. Uh very beautiful mind, strings of yarn going everywhere. <laughs> and and uh anyway, but yeah, so they immediately Rady immediately believes her and and off they go. Um and when they're staring at this kind of you know locked room this ladder comes down and it starts banging like somebody's descending the ladder and you're like oh shit things are about to get scary in this movie and then brother kwan shows up and is like everybody get out of here and the the ladies uh you know our our heroines are like hey man our our friends are missing but Brother Quan is like, well, they're not up here. You need to go downstairs. And then the girls hear somebody calling out uh, that something's happened to the kids. And so off they go back down into the belly of the hotel where they watch uh, the girls do as an ambulance takes the creepy girl's friends away. And the girls question her again and are like, hey, what is going on here? Why Why did our guy friends disappear? Why are your friends all comatose? What is happening? And she says, oh, my friends saw a monster, and then they saw a woman. And if you want to find your friends, you're going to have to go after the monster and the woman. And they're like, oh, okay. Well, lead on, young young pioneer. <laughs> Come on, doggy. Right. Yeah, and that's all. They're like, hey, we're going to take you and your dog, and we're going to go you know, run towards the danger like the X-Men and Rainey says she's going to go in with the girl, but like Ling and, uh, and the other girl, his name, I can't remember right now, um, are both like, are you sure? Do we want to go back in there? How about we just stay outside? Like, I know it's all kinds of crazy out here with the protesters and all, but eh, maybe, uh, that's better than the haunted hotel where our friends either disappeared and or went comatose and were taken to the hospital but back they go richard yes once more into the fray On tr- uh, a different fray yes and th- so they followed this dog to the hotel's laundry room where it starts barking oh, and yeah there's a whole like chair sa- sh- shaking scene and stuff like it gets yes. spooky see this is a good scene this is this is good because it's just simple. It's the creepiest laundry room that's ever existed. And it's just a chair that's just moving. And the dog is going bananas. It's it's a great scene. Yeah. Up up until the point where the chair like flies at the camera all 3D style. Oh, yeah. And then there's like this whole wall of smoke that just like literally falls on top of them. And then like Ling wakes up and it's sort of like uh, they go into the Silent Hill world for a while. Yes. And see, this is all working for me until this shitty jump scare. Oh, my God. So now I, I know I am not a filmmaker because I'm lazy. Uh huh. But I know what makes a good scare and I know what makes a good jump scare. And. A good jump scare is you're like, that thing that's looking at me shouldn't jump at me right now. And then it does. And you're like, booyah, that's a jump scare. Mm -hmm. What I think is a bad jump scare is when there's nothing there and then jump cut to the jump scare where there's just like, if you you want something creepy to happen, 
like as they're searching around this this like you said silent hill esque room which is glorious with the cell phone light have this figure slowly appear like a, a, a person's leg and like lying on the floor of that creepy ass room is 10 times scarier than Ooba gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. It, Ooba it, gotcha. Yeah. It's just a hand that again, just comes out of nowhere reaches for Ling and that's it. it, it and a blast of volume like you need. Mm hmm. Yep. At the uh, James Wan school of filmmaking. I was scared. Just don't, Uh, Well, and it's kind of a creepy moment (laughs) where you're seeing this time loop of Mm. of Siwi um, going through and and calling out for people. And you see it repeat. It's like, oh, and and it it, it has a really nice atmosphere, like you said. And they kind of blow it with this jump scare. Like, you don't it just doesn't belong here. Just do do a good slow burn kind of scare. And anyway. So hey, we're asking for too much. We're mean. Look, we'll we'll talk about this in our summation. But yes. <laughs> so we start seeing our ghost lady showing up in the background and Ling is shining her phone around. And then, yeah, then then we've got another jump scare, second jump scare of this scene. So then we go to the Silent Hill world with Rainy where she sees a a young dog boy in a loincloth yes. scampering around. The secret star of this movie, puppy dog ghost oh boy. Oh my god. Well, one's a ghost, one is not. That's Oh my god. <laughs> that's the real mind bender. Is is this I think is the ghost one. And Yeah. Rainy like watches as this dog boy is like climbing the wall and all the way up to the ceiling. And it's, it's kind of uncanny as weird as this thing looks something about it, climbing the wall and the ceiling and then jumping at her worked for me. Exactly. They were, they were like, here's how not to do a jump scare followed by how to do a jump scare. Yeah. Cause you know, it's coming and you see it unfold and that's what makes it scarier is great. Yeah. And, and so she, immediately wakes back up in the laundry and they're like hey while you while you were sleeping we found hey who is just catatonic and they the uh the other girls ling and siwi are like hey we're looking for rex and Locke. we haven't found them yet but we found hey and then ling sees that there's a big scratch on rainy's arm suggesting that she encountered freddy krueger in a dream and and Rainy is like, no, no, no. I saw this half dog, half kid thing. And they're like, Rainy, look, we went with you on the chicken feet. But dog boys? And that's where the Lords of Dogtown, Rainy? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Ooh, snowboarding. Uh-huh. Half pipes, Rainy? Is that what we're dealing with? Sick yeah. grinds? Dude, freaking... Uh... See you on the slopes, brother. A lot of misfits. Is that what we're in for, Rainy? Yeah. Um, this mountain is made of pure cocaine. Do you know what the street value of this mountain is? <laughs> you can't even quote the wrong movie correctly. <laughs> so, uh, Rainy then questions Mon, who is the, the little girl, as it happens. Um, and she asks her what what happened there and then she says through uh a series of visual flashbacks that brother kwan and his wife like to breed dogs at this hotel richard and then one of the dogs went crazy and attacked brother kwan which is why he's got the bum leg so he killed all the dogs but because his pregnant wife didn't try to stop him she had dog babies (laughs) <laughs> and then and then Richard she goes missing and ever since then people have seen a ghost and also uh she says also this couple uh the, some travelers went missing and uh everybody said they just checked out and left but i'm pretty sure that they were murdered uh says this young child and they also say like hey Armand tells them there's also going to be a ritual this very night at midnight 
that Brother Quan is going to perform to try to exercise the hotel or something. It is the one year anniversary of the disappearance of his wife. That's right. Which, because she says no one was really sure when she went missing, seems questionable. Right. But, all right. <laughs> sure. And and so, over at the hospital, uh, Siwi is kind of taking care of Hay, who comes to, and when the girls are asking him, like, hey, what happened? Where did you go? And where are Rex and Log? Uh, he points at the ceiling and just starts yelling, it's Locke, it's Locke. And the dog it also starts barking at the ceiling, by the way. And then Hay starts yelling, they don't like us over and over again. And then don't leave me behind. Then he thrashes on the bed stand straight up frothing at the mouth repeats they don't like us coming here and bites mm -hmm. off his own tongue yep he's he's got this whole like foaming at the mouth with like green toothpaste thing going on and i love it i just don't who who's they and i they still don't, don't like know us. i love it maybe he's talking about uh the the thai people don't like this group of vacationers Maybe, maybe that's the political subtext of the film. <laughs> there you go. Is they don't like us coming here? Maybe. Found it. Well done. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's a cool scene. I just I wish all of this tied together better. C yeah, because it it feels like a loose confederacy of scenes as opposed to a movie. But not as much as probably the i3 but we'll we'll no, get into no, that this, in a minute. yeah this has a better narrative thing going on here but so the uh so uh, apologies that scene takes place inside the hotel but they immediately take him to the hospital after that scene after he's bitten off his tongue and uh Siwi is gonna stay at the hospital because of the fact that their friend is in critical condition but rainy is like no 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 this is all on me I'm going to go back to the hotel and find Locke and Rex. And then Rainey uh, goes to hunt for Mon and Brother Quan. And the lady at the front desk is like, hey, you need to check the, the kitchen if you're looking for Brother Quan. So Rainey goes to said kitchen where she finds him there, as promised, butchering some meat with a big ass cleaver oh my god this was like the amount of meat from like untold story or some shit so much gristle and boiling freaking fat and choppers and just freaking sinew flying everywhere it's wonderful yeah it the, like it is a hostile level of <laughs> just meat and bone laying around yeah. And she starts pestering Brother Quan, Rainy does, about like, hey, tell me where my friends are. Tell me what's going on here. What about your wife? Did you kill her? And uh, <laughs> finally, Brother Quan is like, hey, back off. And by back off, I mean he wields a 3D style cleaver at her and says, if you don't leave, I really will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> She almost takes the hint. I I do like the fact that Rainey is like, all right, I apologize. I apologize unreservedly. Uh, I, I'm going to take off now. And then, you know, like all of this is set up to make Brother Quan look like the monster of the film. That he is he is the, the guy uh, who is going to be the monster who secretly murdered. Like the idea in a lot of these movies would be that the ghost lady was killed by her husband and is trying to, you know, right that wrong to, to bring, yeah. bring him to justice. Like the good old grudge. Very grudge esque. Yes. And, uh, this goes a slightly different direction uh, where, so Runny rainy finds the dog and has a whole Dr. Doolittle thing where she's like, I need your help doggy. So, will you help me? And the dog's like, I don't know. 
<laughs> exactly. Okay, ready? <laughs> Let's find some ghosts. Let's rock and roll this. <laughs> Who you? Are you looking for Rock and Rex? <laughs> right this way. And <laughs> as this is happening, the the ghost woman is just floating there, watching all of this from above. And we see kind of parallel shots of Hay waking up in the hospital as Rainy is going up the the ladder that the dog pointed to earlier in the movie, right? The one that banged and all that stuff. And this is where Rainy first encounters the living dog boy who prowls around and eats and acts like a dog boy while she hides and watches and tries to reconcile the fact that she is looking at a dog boy. Uh, see, I didn't think that this was going to be unsettling to me. And then the longer they focus on this dog boy and the longer this goes on with his little diapers and the way he like kind of quivers like a cold dog and the, the eyes, they did a really good job on the eyes of this makeup. And man, it just, it starts to wear you down. You get more and more unnerved as this, the sequence where she's hiding from dog boy while trying to keep a uh, doggy quiet is just, Oh, it's so good. It, it really is. It, like you said, this sounds really goofy and it is, but it's also effective. And, uh, and in fact, my note here is the biggest problem with this movie is that it's kind of dull, but dog boy is really fun. Yeah. This, this is like a, uh, play to your strengths situation where they could have left all the ghost stuff out and just focus on the mystery of this part. And I think it would have been a better movie. Yeah. Cause we're on the like way back end of this movie. This is like yeah. last half hour of the film <laughs> that and everything up to this, the whole prelude to this is, you know, an hour worth of getting to this point where you kind of encounter the dog boy in the flesh and and, to, and for my money, it, it just happens way too late. But anyway, so uh, Siwi shows up and is like, hey, Rainy, why weren't you answering your phone? And then she comes at her all ghost-like, uh, you know, all possessed. And the dog starts barking at her. And then she starts choking the shit out of Rainy. And it's a, it's a whole girl fight. It's Rainy and, and Siwi just duking it out. Until Rainy finally turns the tables on her and then just like beats her like it's the descent. <laughs> like it, it's like she is going for like, hey, if you pull a gun, be sure you aim for the you aim to kill kind of thing where Dude, it's awesome. She loses her fucking mind on her. And then she looks over at the door and there's Gosiwi again, you know, even looking even more ghostly and creepy. And it's like, oh, fight number two, ding, ding. <laughs> and this time you just hear the sounds of the fight. But then what? Rainy, uh, like every now and again, you hear like, hey, where are our friends? Where are our friends? And then once more, she wins. And looks over at the door, and there's the ghost for round three. Except this time, it's Ling. And she says, Mommy is here. And Mommy has found her sister and our little brother and sister. You need to come with me. And Rainy's like, Ling? I told you I was pregnant, right? Because this is kind of fucking with me. Yeah. I, I like I like how it's you're thinking, okay, she could beat she could beat Chiwi. But I don't think she can take Ling. I think Ling that weighs her by a few pounds. I think this could be a real grudge match here. And then, of course, they don't fight. But Right. It's just, hey, <laughs> come with me. And as they're walking, Ling just kind of becomes the ghost lady. Yep. And then the ghost lady shows, uh, sh shows Rainy this crumbling CGI wonderland of oh crazy God. buildings and all these weird angles and shit. And it's sort of the hotel, and it's sort of the, the area outside the hotel, but it's also, like, twisted and broken and warped and apocalyptic. Yep, it reminded me of their film, uh, Recycle. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, ooh. Which they had they done, like, yeah, well before this. Remember remember that? <laughs> yeah, remember their good one? Um, hey. So, th like, Rainy and the Ghost Lady 
go to this, you know, hellscape hotel and there's this weird like car that's almost cartoonish kind of lurching around outside. Oh man, that was so weird. It's yeah. (laughs) And everything looks like it's designed by a child. Like it's in a dollhouse. It's really Mm -hmm. cool production design. I'm not entirely sure what it has to do with anything. Yeah. They, they introduced this dollhouse, uh, theme like really really late and i think that was in their house or in their apartment and that was going to be a toy for their child right children but they establish it so late yeah yeah. oh man oh the, the, the this movie comes so dangerously close to being super cool and and snatches defeat from the jaws of victory uh but the the rainy asks are you kwan's wife and the woman is like what are you talking about and you know i'm i'm your mother and rainy's like no 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 i am not your child and the woman uh says well i'm very bored i want to find my children and then i found more and more and more and then we have another flashback where we see the woman being shoved like this is clearly brother Quan's wife and she gets shoved by brother Quan into like this wardrobe and cracks her skull and falls down and so the idea brother Quan, sure enough killed his wife and this woman says but all these children I, oh i caught them by mistake and you're here to take them all away um and rain's like yeah yeah, yeah. we gotta we gotta let everybody go now and so Rainy finds all of her friends tied up in just some room here. And then the the ghost lady attacks, Quan's wife attacks her, but a bell chimes and it's midnight. And the ghost says, I'm going to break you all. And then goes after Rainy. And here we get the reveal of the thing we've known for, I don't know, an hour and 15 minutes at this point. Yes. Which is that the ghost hears a second heartbeat from within Rainy. And then the ghost immediately goes Jerry Springer and is like, I need to know who the father is. Who is the father of this child? (laughs) Oh boy. And everybody in the room just kind of looks at Luck like, uh, that dude? But Rainy's like, look, you can kill me, ghost lady, but you have to let the, this child live. And then Locke starts yelling, like, you, you can't hurt these kids. And then we get the real story, Richard, the, the actual flashback to explain to us what really happened. And it turns out that the woman while she was pregnant got real sick and tired of hearing all the dogs barking and so she killed all of the dogs and much like cutting the feet off chicken or uh, she did not have fingerless children she had dog babies she had um dog bodiless dogs yes She had a litter of dog babies. Two. Yes. Two little twinsies. And the woman, of course, immediately tries to murder these dog babies. (laughs) And, like, Brother Quan ends up, uh, the reason that he walks with a limp is because he basically broke his ankle or something at some point, trying to stop his wife from killing the dog babies strangling them to death and it's really unsettling man like it is uncomfortable this flashback i like you said it is surprising how unnerving the dog baby makeup is yeah because it looks better than it should And, uh, yeah, and her strangling these dog babies and, and, uh, manages to kill one of them, but brother Quan saves the other. And while trying to save the children, he ends up 
pushing her away. She hits the wardrobe and, you know, cracks her skull and dies. So her death was actually, you know, Brother Quan did do it, but it was all in, in an effort to save at least one of the dog babies from strangulation from their mother. <laughs> and anyway, after all of this uh, is revealed... Um, we see that Quan, uh, has realized he's got, because the dog baby is not a real person, it acts like a dog baby, uh, <laughs> that he can't take it out into the world and have anyone understand. So he's going to lock the surviving dog baby up until it can become a dog boy. And then he puts a dog man, a, a, uh, one would hope. Um, with a dog wife and a dog mortgage and a dog of his own. And, uh, but brother Quan takes the body of his wife and just shoves it in a big aquarium. And that's where he keeps her. And, and so we cut back to the present where the ghost is like, Oh yeah, I was pretty terrible. And Rady is like, yeah, 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 you were, but how about you don't kill anybody else? And so the ghost is just like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll let you go, but I want to see Quan. And uh, Rainy, getting very zen about all this, says, you can, but you have to leave your hatred behind, and then you can walk into the real world. And and so this dollhouse world kind of burns to ash around them, and we even see that Rainy's ghost dog boy scratches have faded, uh, because they weren't it's beautiful, man. It's beautiful. Uh, it's so weird. And then they're back in the hotel, but now everybody's awake again, and Brother Quan is there with the living dog boy, and he says, "Look." Let me just finish some clothes I, uh, I promised my wife I would finish, and then you can call the police. And it turns out that Brother Quan has fed the dog boy some poison, you know, meat. Yep. And poisoned himself as well, I think. Mm-hmm. And in a very Romeo and Juliet fashion... Uh, Brother Quan and his dog boy child uh, die together as Brother Quan says, we'll be one family again. And then uh, our heroes yank uh, a, a cover off of a tank. Sure enough, there is Brother Quan's wife uh, a year later suspended in this uh, aquarium. But where was the other dog baby? Well, shouldn't it have been in there with her? Uh, well, you know how it is in a litter. I assume that one dog baby ate the other. Oh. Yeah. Seems natural. It is. Unpleasant to watch, but natural. Um, And so we kind of oh. have a, a mirror of the first scene where we're back on the pier again, only Locke isn't being the worst at this point. And... She says, remember when we were here before and I asked you about the first time that we ever came to this this place in Thailand and you said you didn't remember uh, what I said? And he's like, yeah, 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 I remembered what she said. I said that we would be married and that we would have a kid after five years. And I didn't think that I was ready for a kid. And Rainey's like, yep, but it's all better now. And... <laughs> And then we get like some superimposed ghostly images of the dog boy family. And then everybody leaves town amidst the protests. Yep, with uncle driving. Yeah. And, and now, you know, the, the turn of the character's lock is like, oh, you know, I could really stay here and not rush back to Hong Kong to break up with you. And rainy, uh, our uncle Wong, who uh, is, is rainy's uncle um is like hey do you, do you have a good time here with all the you know the military coup and all and and rainy says you know we played a game here in thailand but we won uh. and then we just she throws the folklore book out the window and then there's like a screech of metal as hey points at the camera 
and like, oh look out look out and then that's it that's the end of the movie so presumably they all died in a, in a horrific car accident at the end i question mark i guess and it, he, his tongue grew back yeah maybe that wasn't him in the hospital maybe when he was possessed he was possessed by the ghost dog boy who grew his tongue back even longer <laughs> um yeah that's that's the child's Shit. eye yet fuck <laughs> Is that... that was that was that was thank you for 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 doing that trying to explain it yeah i I couldn't do that it's uh it is a real wow. uh a real something um <laughs> yep and so let me ask you let me let me kick it into your court <clears throat> first of all what do you think of of the child's eye as a standalone movie no, <laughs> no, I liked, I liked parts of it. Uh-huh. Legit. I enjoyed parts of it. Um, I had an even harder time, uh, connecting with these wonderful teenagers, these grown up adult teenage people than I did with part three. Mm-hmm. I had, I had tough time with, um, beyond Locke and rainy. Uh, the girls were pretty interchangeable and, uh, man, Rex and Hey, I mean, forget it. They were completely, ugh. Um, the the stuff that I expected to happen, like to like I said, connect to the movies didn't happen, which is fine. That's fine. Do something different. Uh-huh. And this one tried to do something different, which is what I liked about the third one because they tried to do something different, but they just waited too long to really get into the meat and potatoes of this and the the required we have to do this jump scare. We have to do um, someone in the dark shining their phone to look at something scare, like all that stuff. Ah, just, just dump it and then focus on this mystery of the dog boy, you know? And I kind of liked it was in an urban setting. I liked how they, they stayed. They didn't like go out in the sticks for this one. I like, I always prefer like the, the Asian horror to stick in the, uh, the urban stuff. I always find that really interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, not enough break dancing, ghost battles, obviously, like the last movie. Um, worth a watch. I think it would have been a lot more fun uh, not taking notes on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I Disposable. mean. Disposable. Yeah. Yes. That is, that is one of the biggest problems is that it it does some interesting stuff for sure, but it doesn't do it often enough yeah and mm, so you know that that's kind of a problem um but uh and it's also a little dull that's the other problem is that it's a little boring yes thank you i forgot to say so many scenes are way too long like they they instead like instead of like this like really good pacing they'll just do something that should have been longer, too short, and then drag out something else too long. That's ridiculous. Yeah. It, yeah. Um, but all that being said, uh, let's let's talk about it in the context of the I series. Where let, let's just get out of the way. Let's rank them. What it, give me in order? Uh, give me worst to best. Ah, worst to best. Um, I would definitely put this one as the worst. Um, I would probably do, uh, part two as the next worst or the, as better than this one. Um, I'd have to do part three just cause it made me laugh as my, my second favorite. And then the, the OGI, the, uh, Augie, uh, I would say is the, is the best. It is a, a, a clever film that, that really gets better. Uh, with you know a second or a third viewing, um, and yeah, I, they really didn't try after that one so hard. Yeah, yeah. I mm, my uh, my worst of best. It may be uh, this is going to be sacrilege to you. The third one may be my worst because of the farting yeah. ghost thing. That really <laughs> that was a line for me that I didn't know I had. 
uh, but farting at a ghost to get rid of it, it, it turns out is not a thing I want to see in a sequel to the eye. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's my worst followed by this one, probably then two, uh, just because it, it, the end of that is so fucking crazy. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then the first one is, is kind of uh, like, that's a legit movie it's a it, it feels uh a little classy um it feels like you're watching an honest to goodness movie as opposed to you know just some nonsense like it, it like it devolves into in these movies where you're like now what does this have to do with it why w- w- she had a dog boy why did she have a dog boy because she killed a dog okay are there ghost do- no ghost dogs just dog boys okay um, yeah, i think that the, the- a lot of uh, because we're doing this now is was the uh, impetus behind a lot of these things. It it feels like they were trying to shoehorn a lot of stuff under this eye umbrella that they knew you know they could bank on some name recognition. Um, the other thing I have learned, Richard, is that I don't think I think the the Pang brothers are very good directors. No, uh, maybe it's the. Uh, one brother directs for a while, then the other one takes over for a while thing. Yeah, they, they direct independently of one another completely. And and mm. that does not... I mean, that's why the a lot of times these movies feel like they're tonally all over the place. Is I think they really just are tonally all over the place because of the way they're put together. Um, Yeah, and so... But it's been really interesting. Like, I've really enjoyed going through these movies and, and sort of as a sub feature going through the ping brothers, just as a directing entity. And we didn't talk about recycle, but that's, that one is interesting. That, that one is worth a look. Absolutely. Um, as is the eye, but I, I don't know that I would recommend two, three or child's eye to anyone other than, Hey, are you curious about seeing a dog boy in a movie? You're going to have to wait a while, but it's, is it worth it? Maybe. It was, it was kind of worth it. Kind of yeah. worth it. Um, yeah. But uh, so coming up on here on Hero Hero Go Show, uh, next episode in two weeks will be a, uh, a standalone episode, uh, a, a series uh, in between other series that I am calling uh, Solo Sono, uh, in which we're just going to we're just going to look at uh some Sion Sono films and uh as many as we can uh over the course of what life I have left and Sion Sono <laughs> continues to make movies at a near breakneck pace uh I'll never catch him but uh it'll be interesting to try and uh and also just to talk about one of the more interesting filmmakers in Asian horror and Asian cinema in general, not just horror. The guy does all kinds of stuff. And fair warning, some of the movies we're going to talk about uh, along the Sion uh, Sono tip uh, will not be explicitly horror. But, you know, sometimes you have to have an excuse to talk about love exposure. Uh, well, uh, obviously. When, I mean, even the act of love explosion. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, we're going to get weird. Like, we're going to talk a little vampire hotel and stuff. Not next week. Next week will be yeah. a different thing. But, uh, actually, I'll tell you, it's going to be tag because uh, somebody brought Ooh. up tag. And I was like, you know what? We should talk about on this show. Uh, should talk about tag on this show. And so we are. Um, nice. Yeah. It's a, a one of my quietly has become one of my favorite Sion Sono films. Um, anyway, we're going to be talking about that uh, in two weeks from now. Richard, where can people find you? Uh, I mentioned, hello, this is the Doom Show. It's a juggernaut. People can't can't stop listening to it. Oh. Uh, but where, where can people find that and more of you? Uh, you can find me, of course, Legion Podcasts. Hello, Doom. Hello, this is the Doom Show. And then, of course, uh, on Podomatic as well, uh, hello doomed show.podomatic.com. Not that I would ever tell people not to go to Legion Podcasts. You son uh, of a you bitch. Can, ah, you can find more stuff uh, from me, uh, doomedmoviethon.com. 
And over at YouTube, I have a channel, Doomed Movie Thon. So I'm keeping it really, really brandy. Um, you came and you gave without taking? <laughs> no, that's Mandy. You know, that, Sorry. Uh, brandy, you're a fine girl. That's right. Yeah, that's the whole uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. Man, don't even joke about that. That's... <laughs> I legit will cry at the end of Guardians I of the Galaxy. I love that too. movie. Loved it. Just watched it again the other night. It's I, wonderful. Um, I it's so funny you mentioned that. A friend of mine is watching that with his son for the first time tonight. Oh, and uh, they've been watching the whole Marvel run together. And nice. yeah, you know, good father son activity, right? And or or just Lietta and Richard activity because we're on our like freaking 13th or 14th viewing yeah no of the entire mcu again because we're amazing yeah so they're watching together for the first time uh guardians of the galaxy 2 and when he told me that i was like all right let me bring a hanky the ending is he's gonna be your son's gonna be pissed yeah but oh my god but also and you know look we'll end the show in a minute folks um we got to get in our Marvel time, but also they're hitting that <laughs> cusp of right after guardians two is Ultron, which is kind of the down note, but then the bounce out of that is Ant-Man civil war, uh, you know, like homecoming, uh, you know, just this oh, run of Marvel movies that are like, man, they were just making really, really good movies. You know. But see, now I don't know, Bo. There's a lot of naysayers on the Twitter. There's lots of uh, arm folding hipsters who they say meh and oof a lot. They don't like that stuff. How dare you? I uh, I can't tell you how much I hate meh uh, as an expression. Oh, my God. oh I hate, I it, hate so it, much. it so much. It, and oof, oof is the thing where it's so bad that it's embarrassing. Yeah, like that's the yeah. that's the other thing. Oh my god! Like if I ever start saying those words like sincerely, call the police or physician. I have been kidnapped. Yes, <laughs> that's some, yeah. Some that's your safe word. If I ever hear you say, you know, <laughs> I this trip has been real meh. It means that you've been taken <laughs> by banditos. If if I start reciting the IPA list to you, like you know, yeah. If I start waxing my mustache, get me out of there. Um. But, yeah i i just you know look you can be uh you can be as cynical as you want to be that's fine i choose i just choose not to be i have so much fun with those marvel movies even the ones i don't like um yeah. you know and i've got a handful that i after seeing them two or three times i'm like eh, if i never watch it again i'm fine uh, that's the problem for me is the more i see them the more i see them like i need to see them again like i'm on a, like a dark world kick like a oh, Thor dark world i like that's a i like like it now that's a weird place <laughs> to help. be uh, I, like i i'm starting to come around on ant-man and the wasp is where i am yeah yeah that's the one where i'm like you know what that one's okay it, it, it's some interesting stuff okay. in that movie yeah it's okay it's all right that one's okay and also the fact that we got, you know, more Agent Lee who figured so prominently into uh WandaVision mm -hmm. which was uh I thought uh quite good. That's that's I have not gotten to that yet. We're we're getting there soon. Okay. Uh soon. we'll we'll reconvene on a separate we'll do that on the Patreon. It'll just be me me and you talking about WandaVision once you Do we have that. time? Do we have time for my uh, Captain America impression? Please. <clears throat> <clears throat> I gotta put her in the water. <laughs> it's quite good. That's my favorite thing that happens in the whole franchise. I gotta put her in the water. <laughs> love it. My mine is I don't. This is an impression, but I just love uh, deeply. That is America's ass. <laughs> I think it's that's a great line. I, it's such a funny line, and I like. It's such a rare like. It's an out of character moment for Captain America, but <laughs> but that's what makes it great is because he's yeah. always like he never takes a moment to just appreciate himself, and the fact that, that he does for time. two seconds, I love it. I, you know what? Well done, good job, good job, Captain yeah. America. 
That is a good. I answer. also I also say that's the plan, Colonel. Like almost every day. Oh sure. From my from Iron Man three because yeah. that's what you say. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It, it, you know, again, I, I people can like what they like, and and I'm never going to tell someone uh, that they're entirely wrong for for enjoying a series of movies or or whatever. Uh, and you know, but when I look at the DC stuff, I'm just like, it's just too dark. I, I just want to have a good time with movies. Uh, like the, not all movies, but I want to have a good time with comic book movies. Yeah. And when I heard that there was like an R rated, the, the Snyder cut was going to be an R rated version of justice league. I was like, why on earth would you want a Superman movie that you can't take a kid to? See, I just, I, I, I don't care about children. I mean, aggressively. Sure. Don't care. But no, I, I, I think I'm fine with whatever, as long as I'm not embarrassed like even within my living room, like, like that, that suicide squad that I was ashamed. It's a bad, bad movie. Yeah. There's so much potential. Couple of cool moments, all wasted. And then it punishes you by, you know, being longer, which I love long movies. I don't care. But when you're recycling, um, the, the, the lady, I forget her name, the one who, forms the suicide squad when you're having her explain what the suicide squad is going to be twice oh every you got a problem you got a problem yeah that that script is and uh, you know i know that it was studio interference yes it was cobbled together and reassembled Hmm. and 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 cut up and stuff but yeah every character is introduced twice every there's a needle drop in every scene for the first 15 yes. minutes it is <laughs> it it like it's like michael bay vomited on a movie mm. and yeah. and out came suicide squad anyway enough but of yeah, our as long as, long as as long as dc makes good stuff I, i'm okay with it as long as it's not doesn't you know yeah i love shazam I, i'm very i thought shazam was oh great. my god yes that's a shining light in the whole freaking their cinematic universe yeah. shazam was pretty much perfect yeah shazam's is so much fun um i'm fine with that original wonder woman 1984 was a real slog mm. uh i could i haven't gotten to yet i i couldn't get into aquaman it was fine but yeah it's that love interest i i don't even was was amber heard the love interest in that movie all i know oh, is I, had yes. zero chemistry yes i do zero. remember that now because those scenes between the two of them were like oh this is just momoa Ooh. acting against balsa wood he is getting <laughs> like i think jason momoa is actually very charming yeah. and and I, I like the undersea the the lovecraftian creatures and i like that and but the monsters the, the octopus yeah. playing the drums is that was another one of those lines i didn't I've, know i had I've blocked that out i blocked that out i could I, as soon as i saw it i was like wait a second what is happening this well, hey, this... my one of my favorite drummers of all time was nicknamed the octopus uh, Damon Shea of Don Caballero. That is only impressive if he was, in fact, a mollusk. Um, I think he was a crustacean. He was a Presbyterian. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, we, have, we l- listen, folks, not only have you gotten your Asian horror fix, you got your, your Marvel talk for the day um, and a quality octopus joke. So, Richard, thank you again. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll love the hell out of you. I'm so glad uh, you're here every time we do one of these. Um, Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And and we'll cook up something again very soon. Yay. All right. Uh, good night, everybody. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye.